Chapter 20, Part 1. Okay, gases. A gas is a fluid, just like liquids are fluid. Gases have very similar properties. So the molecules flow freely. The difference is gases will expand to fit the container that they're in. All right, so first off, the atmosphere. The atmosphere is full of gases. Um, it consists of molecules that occupy space and extend many kilometers above Earth's surface. So the atmosphere is large. We live in an ocean of gas. That's our atmosphere. It's a big ocean of gases. Those molecules of gas get energy from the sunlight, and then they're held to Earth by gravity. So even though it seems like they don't weigh anything, they're actually pulled in by gravity. Otherwise, we wouldn't have an atmosphere. Um, Earth's atmosphere has no definite surface, so it kind of just keeps going until you just get less and less atmosphere and there's not really any atmosphere left. But it's not like, here's the line of the atmosphere. Um, and also a big thing to notice, molecules in the gaseous state are in continuous motion. They are always moving, zooming around, place to place, bouncing off of everything um, in continuous motion. So the atmosphere. The density of the atmosphere decreases with altitude. So you get higher, it becomes less dense. Think about how we can't really breathe at higher atmospheres because there's not enough uh, density of gases in the atmosphere. Um, molecules in the atmosphere are closer together at sea level than they are at higher altitudes. And the air gets thinner and thinner the higher you go. Eventually it just thins out and there's space where there's no atmosphere. Also, the temperature of the atmosphere drops as one goes higher until it rises again at very high altitudes. Um, but it'll keep dropping, that's why it's really cold at the top of a mountain. Um, and why you get snow at the tops of mountains and not necessarily the hills like around here. So, um, as you can see, the 50% of the atmosphere is below 56 kilometers. So lower than Mount Everest, that's half the atmosphere is there. The other half is distributed over the next uh, Oh, 5.6 kilometers. Apologies. Um, the rest of the atmosphere is distributed over the next 50 kilometers or so. 75% um, is below 11 kilometers, just above Mount Everest. Then 90%, this is the thing you need to know, 90%, so almost all of the atmosphere, is below 20 kilometers, just slightly higher than the clouds and Mount Everest. And then the last 9% or so are below 30, and then there's about 1% for the last 15 kilometers or so. And just the temperature, too. Negative 12, negative 36, negative 55, negative 55, negative 2. It gets warmer. So what's the atmosphere? It's that ocean of gas surrounding us. All right, atmospheric pressure is caused by the weight of air, just like water pressure is caused by the weight of water. So if you're underwater, there's a weight of water on your shoulders. Um, there's some water pressure there. Atmospheric pressure is like that weight of air on our shoulders. So we're so accustomed to the invisible air around us that we forget it has weight. Um, now, if you're in water and you're holding a giant bag of water, you don't notice the weight of it. Um, but if you got out of water and tried to lift it, it'd be really heavy. In the same way, you don't notice the weight of air as you walk around it. The density of air changes with temperature, so as that temperature changes at those altitudes, um, the density will change. It gets uh, less and less. So at sea level, one meter cubed has a mass of 1.2 kilograms. And if you fully pressurize a 777 jumbo jet, it adds 1,000 kilograms to its mass. So even though we're like, oh, well, air doesn't weigh anything, it doesn't matter. Air is heavy enough if you have enough of it. Okay, think of it this way. This is a very important thing to understand. There are 10,000 square centimeters in one square meter. A column of air, one meter squared in cross section, that extends up through the atmosphere has a mass of about 10,000 kilograms. So you make it one meter squared, and it goes straight up from sea level to uh, about the top of the atmosphere, will have a mass of 10,000 kilograms and will weigh about 100,000 newtons. Therefore, that's where you get air pressure from. The weight of air that bears down on that one square meter surface at sea level 
is 100,000 newtons. Um, we also use units like pascals and kilopascals. So, about how many kilograms of air occupy a classroom that has a 200 square meter floor area and a 4 meter high ceiling? First, we're going to find the volume, and then we're going to multiply our uh, dimensions for air um, to, into this volume. It'll be 960 kilograms. So here's our volume, 800 meters cubed. And each cubic meter has a mass of 1.2 kilograms. So 1.2 times 800 is 960 kilograms, almost a ton. Pretty heavy. All right, um, atmospheric pressure, what causes it? The weight of the air on your shoulders. Okay, a simple barometer. A simple barometer, you can find a picture in your textbook. Um, the height of the mercury in a tube um, will give us the atmospheric pressure. We'll talk about why. Okay, a barometer, just any, any type of barometer, there are lots of different kinds, is an instrument used for measuring the pressure of the atmosphere. A simple mercury barometer, it's just a glass tube. It must be more, higher than 76 centimeters. It's closed at this end, and then it's filled with mercury and tipped upside down in a dish of mercury where the mercury will run out um, of the submerged bottom until the level falls to 76 centimeters. Then that empty space trapped above is a vacuum, so the vertical height of the column remains constant even when the tube is tilted. Then, uh, variations above and below the average height of 76 centimeters are caused by variations in atmospheric pressure. Um, the barometer balances as the weight of the liquid exerts the same pressure as the atmosphere outside. So it tries to balance with the atmospheric pressure. Um, reason being, if you took uh, 76 centimeters in a column of mercury, will weigh the same as the air that will fill a tube of the same width, a 30 kilometer tube. So since the weight of them is the same, you're able to calculate the pressure. Also, if the atmospheric pressure increases, it will push the mercury column higher than 76 centimeters. Um, so higher pressure, higher column, um, so it'll end up weighing more, just like uh, higher pressure air would. Right, the operation of a barometer is similar to the process of drinking through a straw. As you suck on the straw, you reduce air pressure in the straw that's placed in a drink. Uh, then atmospheric pressure on the liquid surface will push liquid up into the reduced pressure region. So you reduce the air pressure by sucking on it, and then um, the atmospheric pressure pr pushes down on the top of your soda and pushes it up to fill in that lower pressure region. So that liquid is pushed up into the straw by the pressure of the atmosphere. You cannot drink a soda through a straw unless the atmosphere exerts a pressure on the surrounding liquid. So here she's got a cork, so the atmosphere is not exerting pressure. She's not able to drink through it because the atmosphere can't push down on the soda to push the liquid up in the straw. So how does a simple mercury barometer show pressure? Uh, the height of the column. All right, there's another one, another type of barometer called an aneroid barometer. It means it doesn't have air in it. So it's a little metal box that has gotten rid of some of its air. It's got a slightly flexible lid that bends in or out as atmospheric pressure changes. So here's kind of an example of how it would work. Um, there's a can that's got a little bit of water in it. So they heat up the can until there's steam. Then they put the, can the lid on the can um, and remove it from the heat. Then as the can cools, the air pressure that's inside um, goes down because the steam condenses to a liquid. So it's now a lower energy air, it's a lower air pressure, so the can crunches. All right. Similarly, aneroid barometers work without liquids, so they don't have to have the water on the box or anything. Um, variations in atmospheric pressure are shown on the instrument, and as atmospheric pressure decreases with increasing altitude, you can use a barometer to find elevation. Um, an aneroid barometer that's calibrated for altitude is called an altimeter. So that box, as the air pressure changes, will either um, move the flexible metal or out or in, and that'll tell you kind of the, what the pressure is. We also use it in our uh, thermostats, things like that.
All right, Boyle's Law. This is a very important gas law. This is probably the most important gas law you could ever know. Boyle's Law states that the product of pressure and volume for a given mass of gas is a constant as long as the temperature does not change. That means it doesn't matter if you get a different volume and a different pressure for the same amount of gas. Um, as long as you multiply them, you're going to get the same number. All right, so you have uh, inflated tires on a car. That air pressure is higher than the atmospheric pressure. Also, the density of the air in the tire is higher than the atmospheric air. Um, inside the tire, those molecules bounce off the inner walls, and that produces the force that provides um, the pressure of the enclosed air. So those little molecules bouncing off the walls are what keep your tires um, fully inflated and not squishy. All right, so now let's imagine we double the number of molecules in the same space. Okay, you get a higher density, double the density. And now if they're moving at the same average speed, they're going to hit each other more often. And because they're hitting each other more often, it's a higher pressure, double the pressure. So pressure is proportional to density. Um, you can also uh, double the density of the air by compressing its volume. So you put it half the volume, um, then you will increase the density. So increase the density of air in a balloon when you squeeze it and air density in a tire pump as you push the piston downward. So that's how you get um, pressure there. Alright, the product of pressure and volume is the same for any given quantity of gas. Um, so this is our Boyle's Law equation, which you must know. P1 times V1 equals P2 times V2. So that's original pressure times original volume equals final pressure times final volume. All right, scuba divers have to be aware of Boyle's Law as they ascend, as they go up to the surface. Um, that pressure will decrease, right? So it's a higher pressure below because that liquid pressure depends on depth. Um, lower pressure at the top. And as that pressure's changing, um, then their volume will increase. So if the pressure is decreasing, the volume will increase. So a diver needs to make sure not to hold their breath while they're going up um, because that expansion of air in their lungs could be very dangerous. So that's an application of Boyle's Law. All right, if you squeeze a balloon to one-third its volume, by how much will the pressure inside increase? What do you think? One-third the volume. All right, the pressure is increased three times, so you decrease the uh, volume by one-third, you increase the pressure by three times. Uh, no wonder balloons break when you squeeze them. So what's Boyle's Law? Original pressure times original volume equals final pressure times final volume, because they both equal a constant, so it would be the same number. That's it for this one.